Welcome to Really Dicey. This is Manny. I'm here with Matt. Um, we're going to present to you a, a part of a conversation we had from one of our roundtable videos. Um, previously, we talked about how to make magical items more magical. And one of the questions that Matt asked uh, was about the deck of many things. Mm -hmm. And I didn't add it to the video because the video was long enough. Um, but it was such a we had such a fun time answering that question that I, I really wanted to post it separately. So before we do that, before you watch that, uh, that portion of the video, uh, I, we just want to explain to you a little bit of what the deck is and a little bit of the history behind it. The deck of many things is a magical item, a deck of cards. It could be 13, it could be 18, it could be 22 cards, depending on what edition you're playing with. Um, and you just, it's a, you pick up a card randomly and a special effect of some sort happens. And it be, and usually it's pretty grandeur in some way. <laughs> um, for example, if you get like the moon card, you get granted one to four wishes. Um, if you get the rogue card, one of your henchmen turns against you. So it it it's a very dynamic and powerful magic item. Um, so let me pass this to Matt. Yes. Well, uh, like you said, um, very dramatic. About half, roughly half the cards were good. Half the cards were really bad. You lose your soul, kill outright, that sort of thing. So it turns out that this crazy artifact has been in D&D from the very beginning. It first appeared in the Greyhawk supplement in 1975 in the Three Little White Book edition. <laughs> it's been in every edition of D&D since. Um, and there have been many variants uh, presented in Dragon Magazine, and Dungeon Magazine. There have been entire adventures written around it. As Manny mentioned, the card, the deck sometimes has 13 cards. The original deck had 13 cards uh, representing uh, the Ace, King, Queen, Jack, and a Joker from a regular uh, playing deck. But later editions of the game of the deck had 18 cards, and 22 cards. Um, uh, the deck soon became its own prop separated from a playing card and there was a dragon magazine I, I remember this where uh they had they had a cutout of of the different cards and you could cut them out they weren't card stock but you cut them out and then tape them to playing cards and some um some variants one variant in a dragon magazine actually had the cards reversible uh like tarot cards if you if you've ever if you know anything about the tarot card, when you draw a card and you put it down, its actual position uh, changes the meaning. So in that respect, uh, the deck had 44 uh, different uh, effects because the card could be reversed. So um, there have been lots and lots of different variants. The favorite, my favorite variant that I've seen is actually from fourth edition, where the deck as a major artifact is given intelligence. It has moods and it has goals. So depending on things your player character does, the deck may be favorably disposed towards you or negatively disposed. And you can actually check that before you draw from the deck. It gives you a slight edge. Um, and as goals, as you can imagine, the, the deck's goal is to foster chaos, but also, and I like this, also to be present at momentous events throughout history. You know the fall of empires and the and the rise of armies. So that was pretty cool. Since then, uh, the the deck has had many many third party variants, and you can you can buy decks of many things from all sorts of different companies. You can buy props, you know, your little decks, and you can you can flip out. Um, I have one here somewhere, but it's all packed away. <laughs> uh, you can also use the tarot cards. Uh, a lot of tarot cards uh really um really correspond well to the different uh, cards from the deck so it's a famous or infamous uh magic item to throw in your game and it's uh, easy to buy a prop for and it has been the source of a million jokes and it shows up in different games entirely and uh, it's one of the most famous aspects of of dnd all right, so check out our uh, discussion right now about the deck. If anybody thinks about a game-breaking magic item, usually this one tops the list, the deck of many things. Oh, well, yes, I was going to try to lead into that. Uh, that is one of Seth's favorite. And I believe that's 
God's dis. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't like it at all. No. Manny, what do you think about the infamous deck of many things? Um, it's it's great to use if you don't have an adventure planned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, you want a place to do something? Have a deck there and let them pick something randomly and let's see what happens. Oh, death is there? Oh, you're all dead. Okay, let's play something else. Um, but it, yeah, no, seriously though, um, it's it's a good tool if, if you just have no ideas of what you want char these characters to do and you want to just put in some sort of random thing to happen. And uh, sometimes it can be fun, you know, and I, I, I think most situations I've used it for, it's always been, uh, at the end, we all just laugh and talk about what, why do we do this? <laughs> um, all right, well, here's the softball to Scott. Why don't you like it? <laughs> well, for the same reason, because it's it it runs completely counter to storytelling. Uh, it, it randomizes everything. And as a player, I don't want it. If I have a character that I care about, I don't want to have the deck of many things anywhere near the party because I'm just as likely to not only get killed or have something terrible happen if I use the deck, but just as a random example pulled from nowhere, if Seth uses the deck, there's a really good chance that my character is going to get killed because he just did something stupid. I'm not saying that's happened multiple times, but it's happened multiple times. Um, <laughs> well, usually in my experience, what happens is my character does something really stupid, gets a lot of cool stuff, ends up killing himself, and then Scott's character just collects all the magical stuff and goes away. Well, when things work correctly, because whenever the deck comes out, Seth is like, I'm going to pull 15 cards out of this. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm going to hide in the corner until Seth's dead. Uh, because so, but it just, it runs counter to storytelling to me. Like if you have, if you have a, a story, it's going to break the story. Yes. Um, and if you have characters that you have character arcs, or you're trying to do something with the characters, those are going to be taken in a random direction away from wherever you were going or wanted to go with the characters. So I just, um, I just don't like it. Uh, I, it, it's something where I would only want to use it basically with like create a character specifically to use it. And even then I, I just don't really enjoy it. It just, uh, it's not, it, it does things that run counter to why I play. So, um, I just I just don't like it. Yeah, I, I, I can understand both of your perspectives. <laughs> I can. Now, I've seen and Matt has used this in some of his games. There's you can have a deck of many things, but the many things don't have to be game break. I mean, they could be a lot less. I mean, the whole thing about the deck of many things is it's random. You don't know what's going to happen. Um, but the deck of many things has, as Scott was saying, a lot of game breaking stuff. Well, you could change that and have a deck of many things that aren't quite as lethal or not aren't quite as game breaking. Like I uh, think a recent game, Matt has sort of a deck of cards uh, and uh, you'd run across like a, a tablet and you don't know what it does. And so when you read it, he just pulls a random card and it could be something as silly as candy falls from the sky or everything you you have suddenly turns pink or something that has it's more use. Well, uh, yeah, so <laughs> a little background here. Seth loves random charts. He loves to roll random dice. He loves decks of crazy things. And so often when we go to a convention, um, he'll buy something and give it to me and I promise to try to work it into a game for it. So uh, <laughs> that's what I was doing. Um, but with uh, with the decks I've bought there and um, with the deck of many things, what I I enjoy them as a, as a DM because they kind of stretch my um, improvisational skills because I always try as much as I can to make them fit the situation. Um, and I, tr and, you know, if like, for instance, if you're, you're using the deck of many things and you draw three cards, I try to take those three cards and weave them into a story. Mm -hmm. um, so I think as written, uh, the deck of many things just magically has whatever it is show up. So like if you draw a card and you, and it says that you've won a keep, like a deed will just magically appear right in front of you. 
Um, but I would prefer to say, okay, great. So sometime in the upcoming adventure, you will come across the deed or somehow you will get this, um, this keep. And even better, like you draw the keep and then later you draw the, the enmity card. So you have the enmity of an yep. extra planar creature. Well, there you go. You find the keep, but it's haunted and you have to expel the creature that's in it, thereby gaining its enmity. See, so I try to weave it together into a story. But yes, it often breaks whatever story I have going at the time. So Scott and Seth are both right there. <laughs> well, anyway, that's our discussion about the deck of many things. Uh, all I can say is uh, be very careful with the deck. Uh, I recently myself was playing with deck. I drew the ruin card and my storage unit sprung a leak and I lost half of my collection. So be careful.